Hi, this is Steel Burkar. I play Burger in the Summer of Love's production of Hair. We are outside the marquee. We're going to go backstage and we're going to go talk to some people and maybe show you around. So come on, let's go. All right, well, we just kind of came in backstage. We're right now, we are stage left. And the, uh, we got to keep it down, though, because the mic guys are uh, doing their sound check. And here is St. James Theater, historical St. James Theater. And here's our carpets and our set that we get to play around. It's like a, play, a hippie playground, if you must, where the band rocks every night. And that's that. So let's go downstairs. Let's go check out some wigs and some props. Let's go play with some props. All right, here we go. We got the props section right here with uh, Claude's bag of goodies he gives out to the, some tribe members in the second act. We've got a, a drum for the trip sequence when it's the historical war sequence. Uh, we also have a list of all the running order of the, so this way that, you know, the props people can keep themselves in, in check. I um, mean, we got lots of stuff back here. We got guns. Oh, we got guns, man. We should really have these locked up though because they're dangerous because they're rubber. So you could really butt someone in the head with those. So let's go downstairs and check out some wigs. This is downstairs underneath the stage right above us is where we just were. This is the hair room right here. Is that fire? Oh, hey, ladies, how's it going? Oh, God. Impromptu, how did you know? Here we are and here's the, the hair room. This is where we cultivate our long, beautiful hair. Well, some of us do. As you see, Fire really does have nice hair on top of her head right there. Afro, even though I wear a wig. And there it is, actually. <laughs> Are you getting ready to get it on right now? No, I have to go and tie this up. When you take the wig off at the end of the night and you go to home and go to sleep, do you feel like weight has been lifted from your cranium? <laughs> well, here's the wigs. We got all these wonderful wigs, this wonderful hair. Oh, there's HUD. Oh, there's Lulu, and there we got some of that. Oh, look at these. These are, these are some. These will be on all the heads in about five to ten minutes. People will be coming down to get their wigs done. I don't need it. <laughs> Not at all. But let's go. Let's go check out some costumes. All right, here we go. We are going to wardrobe right now. Keep calm, carry on. It's a saying in London. I'm not sure if you knew that. It's a, you know, it was a World War II thing because they were getting bombed. <laughs> that sucks. Hey, boys. Hello. Say hi to Broadway.com. Hi, Broadway.com. These are our, sto our, uh, our lovely men. This is where they, you know, fix our costumes, rips and burns and all kinds of crazy things, snaps and buttons and hooks and... Stinky wristbands, that's me, I smell. We got some some woof here, a little piece of woof. We got my uh, burger weed right there. It's my weed pocket, as I call it. Wherever I, when I collect money, I put, put my weed collection in there. We got some more, we got a little bit of HUD action. We got some random action, I think that might be HUD as well. Just a whole lot of hippie, a whole lot of uh, you know, 60s, a little early 70s, you know, a little bit. Hey, let's go find some hippies and go talk to them. Oh, and look who it is, caught with his skateboard. It's, it's Broadway's Paris Remillard. <laughs> Remillard, really, but that's okay. Did you skateboard here? I did skateboard here. Be careful if you ride a skateboard in New York City. The buses don't stop. Um, how do you feel about the show? Is this show for the faint-hearted? Absolutely not. Uh, you will faint. You, you will faint. When, when Steel puts his uh, loincloth in your face, you may, you may lose contact. You may vomit, more or less, but I don't know about the fainting part. So, Paris, um, you know, you're a good looking guy. I mean, he is. We've already gone on a couple dates. Do girls hit on you in the audience? Um, I mostly get it uh, after. At the stage door? Stage door, yeah. What kind of things do they say? Um, I've had a few girls who are probably too young to do so um, ask me to autograph parts of their body. Um, what which, parts? Which I um, appreciate. Um, their, um, the, the, this part, the top part. So their boobs? Yeah, yeah, that's the word. You, you could say boobs. <laughs> boobs is okay to say. Boobs, 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 boobs. My brother made me, uh, me sign his boobs opening night, actually. Yeah. Right there, yeah, right there, everybody. He was like, please sign right here, brother. Ah, me Larkin brother. Bogan, everybody. Good to see you. See you around. Steel actually, Steel gets very aggressive um, women. I get more girls. Steel gets women. Cougars mostly. What else do the girls do? They comment on your eyes. Do they say you have a great smile? Do they say you have a great body? Um, do, they, do they say that I wish we would have saw you naked instead of other people on stage? 
they say they can't wait to see you naked. These are all things that I say to him. That's why I was looking straight into your eyes. This is just your chance to get this off your chest, isn't it? Clut's not really a sex symbol in the show, and I wear a shirt, so I don't I don't get it as much as I used to. It's kind of sad. I should probably do the shirt without a show one night. Just to. You said shirt without a show. Broke my ego, did I? I should do a shirt without a show. Should do a, a shirt without a show. That's a sad thing. <laughs> Please, people, give shirt shows. They need them too. Okay. And I'll, I'll interview you, you now. So, Steel Burkhart, tell us, tell us what what the uh, uh, enthusiastic audience members uh, do to you. I get a lot of phone numbers. I get a lot of written um, statements from people, which is nice. It's, I, I take it as a compliment. Absolutely. I feel bad. I'm not responding back, but I think that's encouraging the behavior. So I, you know. I um I appreciate it because I appreciate women and I appreciate you. I appreciate, I appreciate you. And I appreciate Broadway.com. I, me, me too. All right, I'm gonna go to my dressing room. Let's follow me. Here we go. Oh, I, hey, we're here. Oh my God, that was such a long walk. And this is my room. Here, let me put some lights on and stuff. This is actually a really cool room. Um, I guess Billy Joe, you know, during American Idiot, had this room when he came on for this little bit, so you could see the stage from the room. If you pulled back that curtain, so it's kind of like I feel like Mufasa, and I feel like it's everything the light touches is mine, except for in the blackout, because then the lights are out, which makes sense. Karen, it's Steel with Broadway.com. Just just put your head through and like cover your unmentionables for the camera at least. I see him every night. It's no big deal. Oh, really? Oh, hey. Is someone else naked in here? Oh, hey. Oh, my God. It's two different people. It's Karen. Hi. This is Karen, and she plays Sheila, and this is Nkrumah. He is also part of the tribe. This is Broadway.com. Hey, I got a quick question for you guys. Karen, how many times, or how many people do you think alone in New York, just in the last four and a half weeks been playing here, have seen you naked? Oh God, really? I have to think about that? I think in the four and a half weeks? Yeah, just here. Just, just in New York. Oh God, like what? Close to 10,000? Close to 10,000, maybe? Yeah. Close to maybe, yeah, maybe. Seeing me naked. How about across the country of the United States of America? I would have to say hundreds of thousands at this point, right? <laughs> yeah, that's true. I think I'm close to maybe a million, you know, through like... Huh, right? <laughs> right? Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> I really, that's, I mean, there's a, probably a lot of porn stars that could say that. Probably, but I mean, but they are probably more ashamed, or maybe not. I don't know. Maybe no, they do. They do it for a living. That's cool. I'm, I'm proud of what I do. Oh, oh, look who it is. Oh my God, it's Casey. We were just coming to look for you. We came to your room once, and you weren't there. I, I'm a close talker. I can't help it. I gotta put the microphone really close. Well, to I know your how mouth. to eat the mic. You know, I've I've played band gigs in really small rooms. I know how to put your mic. <laughs> oh, out the side. When you wear headsets in rock musicals, sometimes your tendency is to sing out the side of your mouth like this, and then you hold on to it forever. Somebody too. <laughs> well, we want to ask you, like, how do you keep the show fresh? I think it's the audience. It has to be the audience. I mean, it's us on stage, like trying to breathe life into it every night. They're real stories. They're real people. But the audience is different every night, and we can see them. We can see you guys. So when you see the way that someone is receiving what you're saying or singing or when Steel touches them inappropriately and they giggle like little girls. Hey, there it is. Oh, my, your hair's still wet. Well, what do you, what do you use in your hair? Bumble and Bumble products for curls. Steel and I actually use them. Use the same product. It's true. As right now, I wash my hair as well, as you can see. It's there's nothing in it right now. Steal's dressing room and steal his product, girls, so that's the way to do it. <laughs> You're the best. You're the best. Stop it. Get out of here. Give me your hair, bro. <laughs> so uh, I hope you enjoyed yourselves, and I hope you come and check us out at the St. James Theater. We're here until September 10th. We'll be rocking and rolling and spreading peace, love, and equality all the way. Here I am, Steel Burkhart. Peace out. Broadway.com.